Good morning. <laughs> Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together to recognize the resurrection of the living King, Lord Jesus. We pray for everybody who is here today. I pray that Jesus, you touch anyone's heart exactly where they are on their walk with you. <clears throat> I pray for everybody on the mission trip in Costa Rica, everybody who's there right now, God, that you're with them, that you bless them and that you use them. They couldn't be here with us today, but they're here in spirit. <laughs> Thank you for everything that you do for us, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So my name is Benjamin Christopher Crowninshield. I'm 26 years old, and I'm a detransitioner. I was born into this world as a biological male, and I will exit this world as a biological male. And there is no amount of surgery or hormones that will ever change that truth. Ever since I was five years old, I've always struggled with feelings of wanting to become a girl. And the feelings don't make sense. I, don't, I don't, still don't know why I have them, but they were certainly there. Um, I've kept these feelings inside of my heart my entire life. And when I was 16 years old, I um, was a sophomore in high school, and I met somebody who was transgender. And this person, they were the opposite of me because they were born female and transitioning to male, but we had the same story. It was, ever since I was five years old, I've had pain, and I've wanted to switch genders, blah, blah. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, this, this person's happy. They have the same story as me. What, maybe I could be transgender. And uh, that was at 16. It took me two years in my head to process, maybe, maybe this is the path for me. Maybe, maybe because I have a mental illness, maybe because I'm mentally handicapped, I need, I, like, I want to live without that, obviously. So this is, <laughs> I should try to go to a doctor to see if that's the answer. And so at 18 years old, I was legally old enough to go to the doctor alone, so I did. I found a doctor who specializes in trans care, and um, I met him for the first time, and I told him how I felt, and um, he gave me a prescription. <laughs> I, keep in mind, I've, I've never had a therapist. I've never had a psychiatrist. It was, um, I met this doctor. Two hours later, I had two prescriptions in my hands. Um, one was for estrogen, and the other one is to block testosterone. So, let's see. My doctor told me that <clears throat> the only way that I could not have these feelings was to transition. That was the only choice. There was, it, like, you, you're either going to live with this the rest of your life, or you're going to have to do this. And in 10 years, you'll forget that you even struggled in the first place. That didn't last very long. <laughs> Let's see. So <clears throat> he told me that for the rest of my life, I have to take these two prescriptions every day, and I did. But um, let me take a second and talk about God. As an 18-year-old, my perspective of God was that if you believe he exists, you will go to heaven. That's it. You just have to believe that he exists and that... Um, he wants you to be happy. He wants you to do whatever it takes to be happy, and you should live your life because you only have one life. Obviously, that's completely twisted. That's, <laughs> that's not true, but that was what I knew as an 18-year-old who didn't go to church. Um, so I, I'm saying this because I have no more... I'm trying to say I have no moral conflict with tr being trans. It was never like, oh, maybe somebody wouldn't want me to do this. This was like I was happy to do it. So I, so I have my prescription, I take it every day, and um, estrogen changes the way that you, everything about you, it changes the way that you look, changes the way that you talk, how you act, how you think, how you feel, how you, everything. And um, the biggest thing was that it was the happiest I was ever, I ever was. 
estrogen took my pain away, my, the desperate pain that I was feeling my entire life, this unexplainable pain that I don't understand, but it took it away. So my only chance of having any hope was this, and it was finally the answer, and I was, it was like a curse that was dispelled finally. I was so confident that I would spend the rest of my life as a woman that I decided to have surgery at the age of 23. It's, the street name is called bottom surgery. It's, it's to change your reproductive organs to match the gender that you're transitioning to. So that is a decision I will live with for the rest of my life. It's completely irreversible. Okay, let me show you this as well. This document legally says I was born female. This is how far I got into this, into this transition, is that everything was changed. My birth certificate, my license, my social security, my body, my entire life, my entire identity was changed. <clears throat> so after I got surgery, I decided to start dating because I wanted to have a family one day. That was my goal. And I found this guy online who happened to be a pastor. And you can see how God got his hand in there, and now he's going <laughs> to... Um, after, <clears throat> after me and this guy dated for uh, a couple weeks, we decided to read the Bible together. And I was grateful. I was grateful to have, like, I, we read the whole Bible cover to cover in 12 months. And I was, I'm grateful to have that under my belt before I started what I'm going through now. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so after 12 months of dating, I flew down to Florida, which is where he lives, and um, I was super excited to meet him in person. We like video chat every day. It was like, finally so excited to see you. And um, one, but the thing I was most excited for was to go to his church. I've been to his church like online every week for months, and so I was like, finally get to go to church. And so Saturday night, the day before church, <clears throat> um, I made a very dangerous prayer that I know <laughs> for the future that God will always answer this quickly, I promise. Um, I said, God, if it's not in your will for us to be together, then please separate us. And yeah, he, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll even say, okay, okay, I'll say how he did it. I met his grandmother at church on Sunday and I shook her hand, and she thought I shook her hand manly. Whatever that means, I shook her hand too manly. And so she was like, she kept that in her head, and she was like, let me meet, I wanna meet your mother. So I was like, okay, add me on Facebook. And I added her on Facebook to connect her, and um, she went through my entire Facebook. She went through back like 14 years ago and found a Facebook post that said, happy birthday, Ben, on it. And I was like, Oh, of course she did. Why did she go through my Facebook? Whatever. And so um, <clears throat> I was, uh, his whole, like my then boyfriend's whole family was at his house waiting for him. And they called him to come over to talk to him about me because they thought he didn't know that I was trans. And so um, they talked to him and they said, you should break up, you should, you know. And so that's how... Um, I later found out that if at the end of the trip he was going to propose to me and I would have said yes. And so um, that's how God stopped my marriage with a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Something that his family said to him was, his, uh, so his uncle is experienced in helping LGBT people transition to a life of living with God. And so his uncle is experienced with this and he was like, yeah, like, I've seen this before, I've done this before. You can't date this person because you have to let them heal. And so, think about how aggravating that is. I just spent my entire life trying to escape this pain in my head. And that I went through surgery, I went through hormones, I went through everything for this guy to say that I need to heal first. Like, this, it's, at, I was like, this guy has some audacity to say this. This is like... So I was alone in my hotel room, and I was on the phone with my now ex-boyfriend, and it was, um, he said that to me, what his uncle said, and I was like, I have to heal first? 
And but like I was like offended, but then I felt God give me like an elbow. It was like, yeah, you have to heal first. And it was the first time in my life that I had, I had like a internal con. It was the first time I had such a strong conviction that I realized, oh, God didn't want me to do this. For an experienced Christian, it's common sense. Like, yeah, God doesn't want you to transition your gender. That's common sense. But I didn't know anything. I, I, I only read the Bible, and I didn't go to church. I didn't know anything. So fi- I finally got the message that God was telling me, this wasn't part of your will. This wasn't part of my will for you. And so at that, the first time, at that realization, I fell to the floor crying. On my, I fell on my knees. I fell face first. And I cried. I cried all day Sunday. I cried all day Monday. I cried all day Tuesday. I, I didn't even eat. I just didn't. I just cried. I just found out that the biggest decision I ever made in my entire life was a mistake. My career choice at the time, I was trying to get into the military for music. I had passed the audition. I have two music degrees. I was excited to finally go into the army. And I... Uh, on that Tuesday, my third day of crying, I got an email saying, you've been medically denied from the military. I got that email from the congressman of New Hampshire. Um, I found out that my early flight home was canceled, and I just, I, I basically lost everything. I lost my entire identity. I lost my early flight, I lost my career, and I lost my, boy, I lost my marriage, you know what I mean? I lost literally everything. <laughs> it was truly rock bottom for me. That day, that Tuesday, was March 14th, 2023. That was barely 12 months ago. It was only 12 months ago where I realized that it wasn't God's will for me to transition. Only 12 months. So after I got back to Manchester, I, about three weeks later, <clears throat> three weeks after I get back from, Manchester, uh, back from Florida, I'm living my regular life. I'm going to work. I'm, I'm coming to... Ch- um, or I'm not coming to church yet, actually. I'm just working and living. And I decide to stop stalling because I was like, okay, God wants me to fix what I've done, but I'm scared. And so for the first time in my life, I made this prayer. Um, I'm going to get it right. <clears throat> I, this is 3 a.m. on a random early April of last year. I said, God, I'm ready to give you my will. I'm ready to live for you for the rest of my life, and your plan is always better than anything we humans could ever plan for ourselves. Help make me a man because I think that's what you want for me. And then, boom, God cuts me off in the middle of my prayer. It was 3 a.m. in my bedroom, and I felt instantly God's presence filled my bedroom. And I felt like I was standing in the throne room of heaven. And God spoke to me out loud verbally. (laughs) He audibly said, My child, I will redeem you. I will make you the man you were meant to be. (laughs) I thought that was a regular thing that he did, but he doesn't do that a lot. (laughs) I was, the only thing I could think of to say was thank you. God just like, he just spoke to me out loud and filled my entire bedroom with his presence. It felt like he was holding my heart in his hands and burning it alive. I even said, ouch, because it would hurt in a good way. It wasn't too bad, but it hurt. <clears throat> I'm happy to say that ever since that day, he's burned away the feelings of ever wanting to be a woman. Ever since that day, I've been doing as many things as possible to restore what I used to have as a man. I I got rid of all my woman's clothing. I gave away my makeup. I decided to go to to an in-person church. So I Googled churches near me on Google and I found Hope City Church and that's... (laughs) I started wearing men's clothes to work 
And um, I started referring to myself as male to retrain my mind after the years of what I've done. On Saturday, February 16th, 2024, just a month and a half ago, I went to the Judicial Court of New Hampshire to change my name back legally. And um, that was a Friday. And four days later, Tuesday the 20th, I got a notarized letter in the mail, which is right here, saying that on February 16th, my name was legally changed back to Benjamin. What's crazy is that I submitted the paperwork on the 16th, and then they changed it on the 16th. It was zero business days. And the first time I tried to change my name in, in Massachusetts, it took four business months. <laughs> but yeah, this I, God is trying to be clear. He's saying, I'm going to help you with this. Like I told you I was going to help you. <laughs> All of these changes were, I don't want to say that they weren't impressive. They were, they were big to me. They were, these were big changes, but they were nothing compared to the biggest decision that I still had ahead of me, which was to switch back hormones to testosterone. This was the scariest decision that I was ever faced with. And I knew that when God spoke to me 12 months ago, that I'd be faced with this decision eventually. Up until this point, I was still taking estrogen every single day because you have to. Your body needs one or the other. It's required. So all of these changes, like changing my clothes, my name, I can, it's in my control. I can do that. And if I don't like it, I can change it back. Who cares? But I'm not going to change it back. I'm just saying. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> this, this next, like this decision to switch my hormones was, it's out of my control. Once I do it and I start taking it, then my, I can't control how I feel anymore. It's, it's, it takes over. God is certainly a God of restoration and he likes to take what is dead and make it alive again. John 8 Verses 31 to 32. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I just want to put into perspective what this decision feels like. If, if Jesus told you to jump off of a cliff, and, but you knew he was going to catch you, 100% he was going to catch you, would you jump? You would, yeah, it's easy to, yeah, yeah, I would jump, yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to say yes. But what if he was serious? What if he genuinely wanted you to jump and that was your only choice? That is what this decision feels like because I felt like I was returning to this pain, this desperate pain that I once had and that I was finally safe from it and now God wants me to go back to this pain. Even though he spoke to me out loud, which I found out he did that because I really needed that encouragement, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have made such a drastic decision unless I knew he was actually going to help me. So um, on March 23rd, my 26th birthday, eight days ago, just eight days ago. Let's see if I can find it. This is testosterone. I finally did it. <laughs> I prayed for God's perfect timing to prepare me for this. Because once I start this, I can't undo it. It's a prescription. I, I can't tell the doctor I've changed my mind for the fourth time. So eight days ago on my 26th birthday, God made it so that I would, I would be emotionally ready to start this. And I get to literally become a born again creation on the day I was born. It's so, I'm so, like, it's so beautiful that in his timing, he, he started, like, a new journey on my birthday because I get to be born on the day I was born. I'm happy to say that I haven't felt a single anything of worry or anxiety ever since I've started testosterone eight days ago. God was faithful yesterday. He's faithful today, and he'll be faithful tomorrow. God has never failed before, and he didn't start with me. And he won't start with you either. Thank you.